Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting video tutorial. Today I have a Fall Gnomes die cut scene card using my favorite technique with die cuts, coloring them, coloring white die cuts with alcohol ink markers. So I think out of all of the ways that I color die cuts, this is probably my top favorite, especially for die cuts with lots of detail, like the Hero Arts scene cards. All of the products I'm using today are brand new Hero Arts September 2023 My Monthly Hero add-on release products. Each month I share videos with the add-ons only. For main kit inspiration, please check out the Hero Arts blog. I am starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock and I am applying four colors of Distress Oxide ink and I am going to work the ink to really get a seamless blend. When I'm designing a scene card that requires some dry time for the background, which this card will, I like to do this first so that it's drying, especially while I'm coloring and working on other things. I'm using Gathered Twigs, Fossilized Amber, Crackling Campfire, I hope, I hope that's the one I'm using, <laughs> and yes, and Fired Brick. To me, this was the perfect fall blend. Now you'll see me go back and forth over the seams where these colors meet to get a beautiful seamless blend. This does take a bit of time, but it is so worth it. My idea for the background of this card, I knew I wanted to use the new Fall Gnome Fancy Die and Tree Stump Fancy Die to create a scene, but I wanted a beautiful background that sets off the dies perfectly. And I thought that it would be beautiful to stencil the leaves and swirls over a background. And when I contemplated what kind of background I wanted this to be, I ultimately decided on white pigment ink over an inked background, so that is what we're going to do. Before I do the white pigment ink, I did take ground espresso around the edges. This helps frame up the design a little bit. It also deepens and darkens those edges, kind of just focusing in on the center where our scene is going to be on our card. Now, I wanna make sure I'm cleaning my work surface. I'm using a glass mat as I am doing each of these steps because it does tend to, um, I don't wanna pick up and transfer, that's what I wanna say. With white pigment ink, I highly recommend placing it on an acrylic block a glass work surface, something of that nature, and picking the ink up from that, especially with a water or an, an ink like oxides that will react with water. It's going to pick up a bit of that color as you are inking this stencil over the top, and you're gonna wanna clean your blending brush as well. So for me, I just press it onto my glass mat and I pick up the ink from that, if I need more ink, I press more ink on the mat. Oh my goodness, look at that background, you guys. It is absolutely stunning, so, so beautiful. Next, I am adding some flickering candle distress mica stain over the top for a little added distress and sparkle. I held it pretty far up so that I got, and I kind of tried not to, press the sprayer down all the way, like a half press, if you will, so that I got like some droplets and a little bit finer mist on my background. Now, I die cut the Fancy Gnome, or Fancy Gnome, yes, the Fancy Gnome, the Fancy Dye Fall Gnome and Tree Stump from some Nina 110 pound weight smooth white cardstock. And Right here, I'm taking the Zero Olo marker. I accidentally colored those areas the wrong color, and it's not really an eraser, but it does have like that blender to it, so it's lightening those areas so I can fix it. Just wanted to make that note. So I die cut these from the cardstock, as you can see, and I didn't die or didn't cut my dies apart. A lot of times I do that with lots of little dies like this, and if I'm going to do this technique especially, because that way I just don't worry about losing things. However, do you see that in the first gnome, I didn't realize his pipe was in the hat? So I had to die cut him again. Oops, 
Next, I am coloring with Olo markers. Olo markers are alcohol ink based markers. If you are interested in learning more about Olo, I have several videos here on my channel, including a video with my friend Lori Craig, who works for the company that sells Olo markers, and she answers those questions. That is going to be in the top left corner of the screen. So if you want to check that out, click that little uh, information bubble. I also have a link in the description below. If you are interested in uh, purchasing some Olo markers, you can click my link and that will take you to the Olo website. You can also pick these up at some of your favorite retailers. The colors of markers I am using will be listed down in the description below. I have chosen not to speed up the coloring more than just the, the natural sped up version of the video today. So there'll be lots of talking about thought process, the stories I tell myself, all of that good stuff while I'm working. I do want to note that I think you could turn Mr. Gnome here into Santa fairly easily if you like the size of this um, of this guy. I think you could add a little pom-pom to his hat. Uh, maybe round his corners, so corners, round the corners of his ears a bit so that they're not so pointy and gnomish. But I think with a few little changes, you could very easily make him Santa. I am started coloring in the body of my gnome. I will say this color was way brighter than what I had hoped for. It's one of my favorite reds, but I failed to remember I wanted something deeper and darker, more like the fired brick Distress Oxide ink. So the darker color I'm blending in doesn't blend with that first color all that great. I know this already from using the markers, but I think the lightness underneath the red, I will end up doing basically full coverage of this darker color, is going to it covers up the lighter color, that's what I want to say, but I think hints of that still show through. Now I did try to blend it already. I know better. I have tried this before with these colors. They don't blend. Uh, but that is okay. So I am simply going to add in uh, more dark and I'll eventually just cover it up. I kept trying y'all. Sometimes I try. I try and I try. <laughs> I don't know. Are you guys the same? You'll have to let me know down in the comments. But I persevered and I end up really loving how he looks. I don't know about you guys. I think I probably mention this every hero arts video that I do where I use their fancy dyes, but their fancy dyes are just a level above the detail the way you can use them. I have used them in many ways in many videos here on my channel where I will die cut them from multiple paper, cut the elements apart and piece them together. I've did some of those for the holiday release here video that was that you can see that was a couple weeks ago. Um, I have, you know, colored them with Copics in the past, Olos, like I'm doing here, I've ink blended them. There is just so many ways to use them. But I, what I love is that the detail that is cut into these just makes it incredible. They really, really uh, elevate the dyes, I guess is what I wanna say, to another level. The beard is something I feel like it's kind of important to give it movement to make it look like hair. I do a feathering. I'm not doing a full on uh, coverage. I should have just avoided the eyes altogether. Like I should have colored over the eyes with my, my face color because I end up using a black jelly roll pen at the end and then a white pen on top of that when it dries, I know better. I used a much darker color for the cheeks. The lighter colors I was trying to use were not showing up. And then I'm gonna step away from the face for a minute. We'll come back to it and we're going to do his little pants here and then we'll finish up. 
One thing I want to mention when you're coloring with alcohol ink markers and maybe you're really saturating the paper, which is what I did with his top. I would suggest if you need to do more blending, move to something else, color something else, work on another area, and then come back to that later on. When it's dry, <coughs> excuse me, the chance of your ink bleeding is a lot less if you do that. I like working on a glass mat if I'm coloring die cuts like this with alcohol ink markers, whatever brand that might be, because you can clean it up with a little alcohol swab wipe or rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle or however, or even stamp cleaner, but it wipes right away. Now, because you're working on a glass mat, I want to recommend as well, if you've colored with red and then you go to color something with a very light color, or, or any dark color, and then you go to use a light color. If you touch your marker to the glass mat, it will pick that color up and transfer it. So you want to have something handy to clean your mat periodically. It just cleans up so, so easily. He's coming to life. I will say out of everything on this card, I worked on the gnome the most. I felt like if he looked cute and if I had his coloring correct, the rest of it would just come together. I knew how I wanted to color all of the leaves and uh, pumpkins and mushrooms and all of that good stuff. That was all easy for me, but getting my gnome right was where I spent my time for this card. I've been getting asked a lot lately, like how long it takes me for certain cards and things. And today's card took me about about an hour and a half. I think I had a brief like 10 minute break in there. So maybe an hour and 20 minutes, let's say, um, where I went and my, ma to be honest, my mail delivery came and I went and opened my mail. So uh, that it, I think that's about as long as it took today. Now, as I have his face the way I like, you'll see that I did take that black jelly roll pen and I colored in his eyes. And I now am going over his top. This is what I was talking about a minute ago where I took a minute and let that dry because I had really saturated the red. I did not want it to bleed. I didn't want to have to redo my gnome. So I just gave it a minute. And then we can always go in and add some dark color with warm grays or something. When I'm all done, I will add white highlights to his eyes, which I think gives him a more lifelike appearance. Now it's time to color in everything else. And because I had to die cut my gnome twice, because the first time I forgot to cut the pipe or, tr or snip the pipe out of his hat area from the dies, I have some extra things, and which it works out. I end up die cutting multiple extra things. We're gonna end up with three pumpkins, and six leaves. I think those are the only thing that I did duplicates of. Don't be afraid to do duplicates of your dice if, to tell whatever story you want. My idea with this card was I really, really wanted the leaves to make kind of a circular shape around the gnome up high. He's standing on the tree trunk and then we're, or the tree stump, pardon me, and then we're gonna have gnomes and pumpkins and grass and mushrooms and all of that good stuff down near the base. So, and then the sentiment will go across the base because we're going to use a greeting from, oh, which one did I use it from? It's one of the new stamp sets. Hold on, let me look really fast like, so I tell you the right one. It's the Hello Fungi stamp set, which is a super cute stamp set with lots of little mushrooms. But it has dyes for those shapes as well as the sentiments. And I wanted to use Hope Your Day is Pure Magic, but it has a dye that coordinates. So I know I can place that right over that area because my scene is really filling the entire thing. So the story, I'm imagining our fun little gnome. He's out in the, in the woods, in the forest. Fall is here. He's gathering his pumpkins, standing on his little tree trunk. The movement of the stencil in the background, it is helping with the movement of the fall leaves around him. All of those things just really kind of help in 
the story of your card. And if you need to tell yourself a story while you are creating, no matter what you're creating, sometimes it helps move you along in the creative process. At least I have found that to be so. There are tons of mushroom options in the Fall Gnome and Tree Stump Fancy Dyes. And I think these are phenomenal. If you have some, it's been, I can't remember how long, but a year, a year and a half, maybe even two years, do you remember some of the mushroom dyes and the ferns and like the secret door? It was kind of a secret garden theme. I can't remember the name of the release from Hero Arts. I think those dyes will work fantastic with these. It is a way to make your supplies, it kind of extends the life of them, if you will. You could have, you could incorporate most of this, if not all of this, with those previously released products. So maybe you just wanna pick up one or two things. Maybe you're like me and you love die cutting. You wanna die cut all of the things. And so you pick up some of the new dies and you use those with things that you already have to create beautiful brand new designs and breathe new life into those things that you already have. I kind of wish I would have thought of that before I was doing the editing for this video because I think it would have been fun to maybe try that out. And I may have to do that in the future because I think it would be very fun. Okay, so once we have everything colored, it is going to be time to pull it all together. Something I talk about quite a bit here on my channel and something I do quite a bit here on my channel is I like to pop up my elements off of a busy background. And this is a fairly busy background, even though it's very muted. So I will be adhering everything with foam adhesive. Let's, before we get too far, let's go ahead and grab our sentiment. I'm stamping Hope Your Day is Pure Magic. From that Hello Fungi stamp set, I stamped that on black cardstock using the embossing and watermark ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder, and then die cutting with the coordinating die, and it cuts really nice and close. Oh my goodness, I am loving so much that the companies are creating dies to go with a lot of the sentiments now that die cut them perfectly. And especially when they die cut them super close, those are my favorites because I don't generally want a huge big border around them. And these are fantastic. I always love how white embossing looks on black and I felt like on this card, it would really stand out against all the rich warm colors of autumn. So I'm taping that down, running it through. I opted to leave my panel full A2 size card or full two, full two, I cannot talk, full size. A2 panel. So it is going to fit the front of your A2 card base four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I decided I didn't think I wanted a border around it and that's why I decided to do that. I'm piecing some foam on the back. This is the Simon Says Stamp foam tape and I love it. And it's the same height as my favorite foam adhesive squares from Simon. These are not the thin profile. These are the regular profile. Those are my favorites. And we're going to use a combination of these. We've popped up the tree trunk and see how it gives that little bit of lift off the background, that depth and dimension that we're looking for. We're going to peel off all of our foam and we're going to start putting it together. There is enough room on the back of our leaves that I can pop them up with one tiny foam square back behind them. You could always trim your foam square as well. And then I kind of forgot I shouldn't have put foam squares on the feet because those need to actually be on the tree stump. So let's just add glue there instead. And there he is doing a little jig on his tree stump, holding his pumpkin. I love too. So there's another fun thing. There are options, you guys in this die set. There is a little basket. There is a lantern. There are um, obviously all the different mushrooms and things. There is the pumpkin. You could have him holding any of these things or 
from your other die sets, you may have something else you want him to hold. But there's lots of options. I gave him the pumpkin. I kind of kept this very, I am in the mood for fall. I don't know. Raise your hand in the chat, in the comments if you are in the mood for fall. I'm in the mood for fall. So I definitely went with fall vibes with multiple pumpkins, lots of leaves. So that's what I had him holding here. I thought that would be kind of cute and fun. And then I have that little sprig of grass and I'm grouping elements down near the base, trying to give it a very natural in the woods feel. And then you'll notice my placement of the leaves is going to be circular and it will come to life here. We're gonna finish it off with a few little pearls here in a little bit. And of course, for everyone who has thought, where are the hearts been on your cards lately? We are going to have a heart on this card design. So we've got our leaves. I noticed I kind of didn't do my placement on the right side very good. I'm going to have to fix that. We'll come back. I'm going to move that one just a little bit. Even though it tore my background, I think we can still hide it. Anything kind of too skinny, obviously the blades of grass, those were glued on top of something already attached with foam. The other little growth. I don't know. It might be mushrooms. I don't, I colored it green. Who knows? I attach that with glue rather than foam. The pumpkin on top of the tree stump that is attached with glue and it's almost all together. And I love the leaves in this shape because once we kind of fill in, I do need to adjust my yellow leaf too. It's not, it's kind of, if we just slightly tilt it, I think it'll look better. But this shape just gives a lot of movement to the card, plus add some really fun visual interest. To help round out the shape, we're going to scatter some of these pearls, as I mentioned earlier. These are some Trinity Stamps pearls in the colors Mossy and um, Lovely Latte. Ooh, that sounds yummy. So I just picked a couple of fun colors. I don't want it to detract or take away from the design. So they're pretty muted. And it helps with that circular shape, almost a snow globe type shape, even though this obviously isn't a snow globe, but wouldn't a fall snow globe be cute? Oh my gosh, you guys, I just thought of this. Honeybee Stamps has that large cloche. I think that this in that would be cute. I don't know if it'll fit, but I'll look into it. And then I did add a white heart right down below. For some reason, all of my ideas come to me as I'm voicing over something I've already made. <laughs> it happens. But I like the white heart. It really plays off the white embossing perfectly. We will glue this card then to a white top fold card base and our card is all finished. Thank you guys so very much for joining me today for this Fall Gnomes Scene die cut card featuring brand new products from the Hero Arts September 2023 My Monthly Hero release. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube for your convenience. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to always be notified when there is a new video or I go live. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next time.